Flying to an international destination can be a thrilling experience, but does demand careful planning and attention to detail in the interest of safety, as well as compliance with regulations. Before you decide on your destination, it's important to investigate that country's individual entry and departure requirements, as well as the availability of services, including fuel, parking, transportation if needed, and the fees associated with these services. Each country's individual requirements can vary, and there are a number of quality online resources to help. And if you can connect with the FBO or another pilot who has local knowledge and experience to share, even better. Now is also a good time to check for any travel advisories or warnings issued by the State Department and confirm your aircraft insurance extends to the country in which you intend to operate. You'll find that many destinations, Canada, the Bahamas, and much of the Caribbean are very accommodating of private aircraft and it's relatively easy to comply with the local procedures. But for other international destinations, you'll find the complexities are such that it may be worthwhile, or even required, to enlist the assistance of a local representative, known as a handler, to help navigate the entry and departure requirements to ensure a hassle-free visit. For Central and South American destinations, for example, Requirements can change significantly on short notice. Regardless of your destination, and as the focus of this segment for conducting an international flight, you must understand the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, requirements and procedures for departure and re-entry. To begin, your aircraft must be affixed with a U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, user fee decal which can be purchased online, allowing several weeks for delivery. The decal is required to be displayed on the aircraft. Many pilots opt for a location on or near the door, so it's easy to access and identify. The decal is valid for a given calendar year. Check that your required aircraft documents are current and valid. This includes your airworthiness certificate, registration, operating limitations, and weight and balance data. While not required for domestic flights, a radio station license is required by the FCC for international flying, although enforcement of this requirement is not common. You should also ensure a flotation device is available for each occupant if operating beyond power-off gliding distance from shore, as well as a pyrotechnic signaling device as required by FAR 91.205. In the case of overwater travel, it's recommended that you also carry a life raft suitable for all occupants. As PIC, you must ensure all travelers have the appropriate travel documents on their person, which includes a valid U.S. passport or, for non-U.S. citizens, a valid travel document. As pilot, you must have your license with English proficiency endorsement, passport, medical certificate, restricted radio telephone operator's permit, and, if the aircraft is not registered in the pilot's name, it's best to have a letter of authorization granting permission for the aircraft to be operated abroad. Use of an ICAO flight plan is required for international flights, either IFR or Defense VFR. While an ICAO flight plan and an FAA flight plan are similar in many ways, there are some important differences including equipment codes. All pilots crossing the U.S. border in either direction are required to use the CBP eAPIS system to provide crew, passengers, aircraft, and trip information. eAPIS information can be submitted online after creating an account and must be filed at least one hour before departing or arriving in the U.S., but you can file as far in advance as you wish. As part of the EAPIS departure submission, you'll be required to provide aircraft information, including your customs decal number, departure information, to include the CBP airport, which is your last domestic point of departure, or in the case you are not departing from a CBP airport, the CBP airport closest to your actual departure point. It's recommended 
that you save a copy of your submitted manifest, either digital or hard copy. Once the EAPIS manifest has been processed, the receipt message will instruct you to proceed with the departure flight and a confirmation email is also sent. For planning your return to the States, ensure your arrival EAPIS has been filed and check for any special requirements on the CBP website and then locate an airport of entry, AOE. An AOE is an airport that provides customs and immigration services for inbound flights. In most cases, your first landing airport must be the one closest to the point where the Air Defense Identification Zone, ADAS, is penetrated. But there can be exceptions, and it's also possible to obtain an overflight permit allowing you to fly beyond an initial airport of entry. You can locate AOEs on the CBP website, FAA chart supplement, or most flight planning apps. It's also a good practice to contact the CBP ahead of time to better understand hours of operation and local policies. CBP also requires formal notice of arrival at least one hour in advance, normally accomplished by a telephone call to the CBP office at your intended airport. The notification call is a good opportunity to ask questions regarding local procedures and ensure you're familiar with the CBP location on the airport. When you land, taxi immediately to the CBP facility. Should no inspecting officer be present, the pilot should call the CBP office for instructions. As the PIC, you are responsible for holding any merchandise or baggage unopened and on the aircraft until either a CBP officer arrives or gives instructions. All occupants should have the same documents available for the return flight. And for re-entry into the States, you'll be required to complete the U.S. Customs and Declaration form. The head of a family may make a joint declaration for all members residing in the same household and returning to the U.S. Be prepared to comply with inspection, which may entail offloading baggage and a brief interview by a CBP officer. The pilot should assist in opening aircraft and baggage compartments. The aircraft will also be scanned for any nuclear materials. The entire inspection should only last a few minutes for most light aircraft and a little longer for larger or turbine aircraft. Once cleared by the CBP officer, you're free to continue on your way.